Hi, I'm Richard Byrne. In this video, I want to show you a handful of features of Screencastify that you should know how to use if you're creating instructional videos for your students. So let's go ahead and take a look at Screencastify. You can see here I have it installed in my Chrome browser. And I'm going to open it up. And again, we can specify browser tab, desktop, webcam only. But one of the things I like to point out to people is they can choose which microphone they want to use to record their narration. Now, in my case, I have an external microphone. I use my blue snowball microphone. So I want to make sure I've specified that in the microphone setting so that it doesn't default to picking up my computer audio instead. Now, speaking of computer audio, you can see here I have this option for tab audio. And that's something I'll turn on if I'm going to play back a video during my video or audio during my video. You turn that on or turn that off. Bear in mind, if you turn that on, sometimes it provides a little bit of a feedback loop. So test a couple versions of your recording before you publish the final one for your students. Now, if I'm recording my desktop, you'll see that it says system audio instead of tab audio. Minor difference there. Now, before I record, I like to make sure I have my drawing tools turned on and I have a little countdown timer set to count me in on the recording. Let's go ahead and record now. So you can see now I have my drawing tools up and one of the things I like to do with the drawing tools, I like to try to pick a color that stands out from whatever background I'm drawing on top of. You know, Maybe I wanna to say to my students, click here to learn more. Now, again, if I scroll further down, maybe I need a different color a little bit further down on this page. And so I'll go and use red and say, All right, go here. So I'm drawing with those tools. Now my mouse pointer, one of the things I like to turn on is highlight clicks. And so when I highlight, when I have highlight clicks turned on, that means that people will see that highlighter come around as a little circle when I click on something. In fact, if I click backwards, we can see it again. You'll see that little click, that little circle pop up around the click. Now, when I'm done with my recording, we'll just go ahead and pause that recording, then go up here and we're going to stop it. Now, the next thing I wanna show you is as I am waiting for this to process and save to my Google Drive, I wanna point out these are more options down here that a lot of people overlook. Under more options, you can see besides your YouTube, your shared classroom, your get embed code options, you can go to add more share options, and then you can connect to three other services, including Edpuzzle, which is great if you would like to use your video lesson and build in some questions for students to answer using Edpuzzle. And I have a video on how to use Edpuzzle linked up in the description of this video. Of course, you can also send it out to Wakelet or Remind. So there's Edpuzzle. Now I can quickly share that to my Edpuzzle account where I can build in some questions for my students. So that's a handful of features that everyone who uses Screencastify should know how to use. By the way, I recorded this video of how to use Screencastify using Screencast-O-Matic. Kind of meta. As always, for more tips and tricks like this, please check out freetechforteachers.com or subscribe to my YouTube channel.